Hello everybody. Welcome back to Monday Night Mythbusters. Welcome, welcome. I'm Dr. Carolyn George from Vita Integrative Medicine and this is Leslie Harrington, Transformational Guys. Coach. It's not in your lap. <laughs> That'd be okay, yeah. No problem. So, uh, hey there, Nick. Thanks for joining in. Hi, Nick. Uh, so tonight, guys, we are talking about all of the highlights from a conference we just came back from late last night. Uh, we were in LA just for the, the weekend, for a long weekend, and we were at the um, Dave Asprey's Biohacking, the Bulletproof uh, Biohacking Conference, now called the um, Upgrade, Labs, Upgrade Labs, yeah, which is the name of his kind of biohacking facility in LA and Santa Monica. Right, so he used, to, well he still has the bio, or the Bulletproof Coffee Company which now does a whole bunch of other things, not just coffee, um, but he's created a new lab where he's doing all kinds of fun things to biohack because he wants to live to be 180 years old. It sounds like they're actually gonna start franchising too because they're opening new locations. Mm -hmm. So um, that's cool because it's on the West Coast and it's something I think we need here, some of these options for alternative therapies. So. Um, like so many things we want to talk oh, about that are just it's so, many. so cool yeah, like so it's many. like a playground for people who that's, are interested in, in longevity and living like real vibrantly and yeah. kind of like maximizing all the aspects of your feet like peak performance right they right. focus on people so we were really torn hey there Marianne and Anne hey, hey, hey guys and Marianne so we were really torn between the conference with these great uh, speakers and they had some breakout sessions and then they had what we called the playground which is where they had a whole bunch of the gadgets and uh, you know uh, different supplements and teas and me. coffees and all kinds of uh, fun things. So, um, so we were bouncing back between them uh, from pretty much about seven thirty, eight o'clock in the morning until six o'clock at night. Yeah. yeah. So it was good. It was lots yeah, of fun. Yeah, nonstop, and you couldn't, you know, you didn't want to miss any of the speakers because there were so many good speakers, and then you had to choose, and then you had to go into the tech room and. Yeah, was, check out some of the tech stuff. Yeah. So we're going to talk a bit about the speakers and we're going to talk a little bit about the tech. And if anybody has any questions, then of course, you know, the, the routine, go ahead and ask because we love questions. Uh, so first, has anybody ever um, used any kind of alternative therapies like um, PMF or um, any kind of virtual reality, uh, oxygen, therapy, oxygen therapy, IV hydrogen therapy, IV hydrogen therapy, anything like that? So if you have, give us a, a thumbs up. Because a lot of what they're talking about there is uh, the basics. So they actually spent a huge amount of time talking about meditation and dealing with anxiety. So that was a really, really big part of it, the basics. Of course, diet, and they had excellent food there. Um, and then the other part of it was looking at ways to kind of hack it, um, hack the, the foundational things, hacking uh, the diet and hacking um, the stress piece with meditations, ways to achieve more with meditation in less time. Okay. Yeah, and it almost is doing some of the work for you in terms of it's triggering your brain to get to that particular state that you want to be in, you kind of, your goal is when you're doing meditation, and this is just kind of setting you up for the type of things that they're doing, they've researched, is putting your brain into that state, kind of whether you like it or not, right? to some extent, well, yeah, you've got not, to have some focus. You, you, yeah, yeah, you've got to have some focus. Yeah. But it's really, uh, some of the gadgets that we saw were really focusing on trying to help you focus. Um, and some of them did that through um, like hyperstimulation, like we were on this one really cool bed um, called a Vibe. Vibe, yeah, Vibe, V-I-B-E. And it's uh, vibrational, but it's also sound, and then they had lights over your eyes, and so you were getting kind of from all sensations, you were getting um, uh, stimulated, and so that was very cool because you could get into kind of a meditative place pretty quickly. Um, so that was awesome. Uh, I'm gonna talk with the fellow that has that and see um, if he's got any place else down here that's got one. How much it would be to bring one in, um, but that looked very cool. So. That I'm was, toting her around all the booths. I'm like, check this one out. Check this one out. What do you think of this one? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I was a very willing partner. I actually, I have a lot of fun pictures too. If you look on the website of uh, Dr. George doing her, her, you know, uh, the virtual reality and having the goggles and the earmuffs and stuff yeah. like that. Do you and have each a picture of me on different. the vibe bed though? I don't think you took one. No, I don't because yeah. I was on the other bed. Yeah, right. She we was, she was vibing. Yeah, we were both time. vibing at the same time. <laughs> 
I almost missed one of the talks that we wanted to see. Right? So we were like, boom, out of there. Um, so then another uh, thing that I tried, and you tried too, um, to try to help you get into a really good meditative state was um, these virtual reality trip. glasses. Trip with a double P, T-R-I-P-P. -P. And so it's a virtual reality, you put the goggles on, you've got a little bit of sound, and you're going through this whole um, scape uh, of what's going on around you, and there's music, and then you're doing breathing exercises according to their instructions, and you can pretty quickly get into a nice I thought meditation. It was like, it's like a Disney ride, right? But you're like exhaling. Yeah. It's like you would imagine wind blowing as you exhale. Right. And then it's like all of a sudden you're exhaling glitter. And, yeah. you know, it's just very um, imaginative. Yeah. And then you're like have a little mo a little mockingbird or hummingbird mm -hmm. that you're moving your head and kind of guiding where he goes. And as he flies around, you kind of pick where he goes. It was really, really cool. Right. Yeah, that was very good. That's another thing I... Uh, I'm going to look at bringing into the office and having in our IV nutrient areas as a kind of a um, augmenting, you know, what you're doing with the IV nutrients. So we'll see uh, if I can get some of these in in the next few months because there were some really cool uh, uh, ways to really bring that meditative state, which I think is challenging for a lot of people to do unless you've done it for a long time to kind of figure out how to drop in and these are tools to help you figure out how to do it so that you can come here learn how to do it and then go home and just use some other tools. Yeah, you can get back to that meditative state a little bit easier because you kind of know what it feels like. Is there any type of evidence with meditation improving blood flow? To the rest of your as body? As far as like the relaxation response? Yeah, so like if you're having an IV, is mm -hmm. it potential that your the distribution of the nutrients would happen more smoothly or? Not that, yeah, I don't think there's any studies looking well, at that. We're going to have a study. Yeah, maybe we'll have to do that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, but I certainly think that it can um, be, you're already sitting there, right? You're, you could be relaxing or you could be stressing in on your phone, right? And if you're doing one of these other modalities, you're habit stacking. Uh, and that's a big thing that we were really Talks talking about. about. That, yeah. There's a lot of habit stacking. So creating healthy habits and then doing them one on top of the other. And that just manifests you know results even faster and yeah Dave Asprey's always about faster yes he's he likes to cheat as, do cheat, as little cheat, as cheat, possible cheat. Yeah. to get the most as, as he can out of his body um, but that the st habit stacking they talked about different people but Ariana Huffington in particular who talks a lot about peak performance in conjunction with recovery and being able to nurture your body and she goes into these organizations and helps them to help their employees to be more productive and more effective so it's not that they're working less, it's that they're managing their time outside of work to make sure that they're not in a state of burnout. So that whole right. like, you know, working in, in 48 hour days is like not the badge of honor that we used to think it is because yeah. people are starting to recognize just how destructive it is to your life. But she also made the a point, and she was a very good speaker, uh, she made the point, it's not like her companies or the ones that she goes to are nine to five firms where you show up at nine, you do your thing and leave at five and you don't worry about it. She, she really um, made a point of saying sometimes you're going to pull those late nights, sometimes you're going to work extra hard, but then you have to know that you were burning yourself low and you have to then take days off, hours off, come in late, do other things to nourish yourself so that you are ready to be ready for, mm -hmm. you know, she kind of, you know, showed it as a bit of a roller coaster in some of these businesses where you have to really give it. Yeah. Uh, but then if, when you do that, you got to sit back and do that self care. Yeah. I recognize that. Um, so what were some of your others? Um, let, let's stick with oh, the speakers for a second. So my, one of my favorite was Navi Jane. Oh my gosh. So, I loved yeah. him. Yeah. I loved him. If you guys saw, he was the one in the picture. Um, on both of our yeah, I got a selfie with him. Yes, she's over there. <laughs> <laughs> so he is a, a billionaire uh, who comes to speak to us about the things that he, not that he's doing, but how we can start to do things like he's doing it. So he just recognized a problem, and then when he recognized the problem, it's like, okay, what do we need to do to fix this? And his really cool point was that often people within the field can improve things incrementally little bit by little bit but people from outside a field who don't know it who ask those questions that really um, destabilize things are the ones that are really the big game changers yeah yeah the person that's the true expert in the industry is the one that may not be going beyond and not really knowing what he doesn't know kind of thing 
and having it, the people that he surrounds himself he's like I'm not a doctor I'm not an engineer I'm not an astronaut you know and, he, and he's literally sending the first private right. access to the moon will be through him, through him. Um, but and the, and he, that and that was um, just as a side note yeah. that was because he didn't know why it had to cost so much to send a rocket up so he kept on asking why does it cost so much what costs so much because you have to have big rockets why do you have to have big rockets? Because you've got to have a lot of fuel to get it up there. So he kept on asking questions and eventually got to Peter a place where they had a much smaller rocket, which was much more cost, cost effective. And so he asked those tough questions, which yeah. people, the engineers were going, we can't do it, we can't do it. We and it went it. from like $300 million to under 20. Yeah. You know, so he was pretty amazing. But he, he, what he does is he surrounds himself with the right people. Yes. And he, yes. he's like, I'm no expert, but he'll go and get the right people in yeah. with that. What he did was challenge one of the world's biggest health crises. Is what else can I go and, and improve or change in the world? Like right. he goes after these huge problems that he wants to conquer, and one of them is health. And um, so he did develop his own. Uh, he worked with a different scientist to come up with a very unique way of mm -hmm. measuring your microbiome and understanding what the gut bacteria is doing in your body. We have a lot of testing that gives us a lot of information about the, the balance of your bacteria, how they're, you know, if, if there's more of one, not enough of the other, things like that, and how you compare to the rest of the universe, but they lack the information of how the, bu the bugs are actually, what are they doing in yeah, there? What, what, what short-chain fatty acids are they making? Right. And so it's what he calls RNA sequencing, which is a very unique technique that he's the only one that's really has that. that well, he got now, it from right? the Department of Defense. So there was somebody that was working on that for our defense because they wanted to be able, if there was any, any biologic warfare, they have to be able to figure out what it's making, not what is the organism, but what is the chemical that it's making that can be hurting us. So he took, he, <laughs> He uh, hired, the guy. <laughs> hired with the guy that was working on that and created this biome because the bacteria can make uh, certain um, molecules, but many bacteria can make those same molecules, and one bacteria can make multiple different molecules. So it really, his point is that it doesn't matter so much what bacteria you have, but what's the metabolome, what are the metabolic end products that they're making, and so that's a biome. Yeah, and it's a really cool test because it also tells you the foods that the bacteria in your gut would prefer. Yeah. And would not prefer. So And it's not only bacteria, it's viruses and yeast. Yeah, and molds yeah, as well. it's any yeah. type of, of organism, right? Any type, yeah. Yeah, and um, so it will give you some information as far as food recommendations as well. And, um, you know, you'd be surprised to see that there's super healthy foods that may not be right for you. Right. right? So, for example, he gave it for himself an example. Of he loves apples but when he did his biome he found that he had uh, a virus that lived on apples or came from apples and so he stopped the apples and then he had certain symptoms of his improve yes he wouldn't have known that because apples can be very healthy super super interesting yeah very so interesting so i'm gonna bring that to yes. the office too <laughs> you guys are like we just have, oh, have an open open house totally like a kid in a, at a candy store like, yes oh, <laughs> yeah um, so then, I guess, so Naveen Jain was definitely by yeah, he far, was like, I was the most starstruck by him. Um, of course, Sean Stevenson, who's incredible, amazing, yes. model health show. He um, was amazing. Gave, and I thought what he said was so profound. I think it kind of got lost in all the kind of glitter of a lot of other things. But one of his major points was that we need diversity. We need diversity in our diet. We need diversity in our exercise. We need diversity in our yes. ways of playing. Um, so we, we tend to kind of get stuck and always do Pilates, always eat these foods. We, we get very regimented and habituated to that, but there's great benefit in the diverse, diversity, whatever we're doing. Yeah, definitely. He talked about the physical, but he did talk about playing, which is another common theme of this was kind of, there was a lot of human connection. There was a lot of... Um, just bringing yourself back to center, a lot right. more talk. I mean, there had to be several talks. We, we did like standing and interactive meditations yes. All throughout the, the actual presentations. Time. Yeah, I, I, we come off this vibrating bed where we're both in la-la land and we came and walked into the room into another meditation. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, we got a lot of that in this weekend. But it was really interesting that it was a priority to many, many of the speakers. Yeah. Even the real sciencey, you know, the more it, they, yeah, they're absolutely. all talking about the the importance of meditation. Just like why there's so many vendors there trying to sell these devices that are are going to help you 
time to get achieve. into it. You know, mm -hmm. it, they know it's a challenge to get people to want to meditate, but everyone knows it's like conceptually the right thing mm -hmm. to do. They just haven't figured out how to add it to their routine. Right, right. So uh, that was definitely, that kind of struck me in something where I thought it was going to be really a lot of gadgets and just gadget focused. And there was, there was tons of them. Um, but it was really about... They were useful gadgets. They were yeah. useful gadgets, but say, uh, also just a lot of talk about those basics. Yeah. Sleep. Ariana yes. Huffington was huge on sleep. Of course, she's written a book about it. Same um, with Sean. Sean's Same with Sean. a book as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, sleep is um, one of those things that people are still somewhat shoving to the side. I think um, oh, yeah. they're, they're just not... There's so much science that shows the benefits of it, and, and not only the benefits, but when you don't get it, how, how devastating yeah. it can be to your body. So that came up repeatedly, mm -hmm. I think, with everybody. Mm -hmm. Yep, um, everybody. Dave Asprey was actually one of my one of my favorite talks came from Dave because it's so relative to some of the things we see, and it's the ketogenic diet yes. and how significant the amount of people that are are participating in the ketogenic diet or some form of it. And his point is that while there's so many benefits, there's a way to do it and there's mm -hmm. a, a bad way to do it. And a lot of people are doing what he called the garbage keto or uh, dirty keto. dirty keto. Yeah. Um, so. That he said of, of the statistics he put up there that 90% of the people aren't paying attention to the quality of the fats, to the quality of the proteins that they're putting in their body, which can be kind of devastating and it might be a short term, you'll, you'll lose some right. weight kind of quickly, but, it's but ultimately you're creating more inflammation in your body and it's long term not going to be. And the other big point he wanted to make was that a lot of people think keto is just the fats and the proteins and they ditch all the complex carbs, the vegetables, uh, the fruits, you know, a little bit of fruit. And so um, his point was, you really need most of your diet, your vegetables. You know, this is kind of across, again, so many it's, different yeah. special, specialists with diet. You always need most of your diet should be those vegetables. And then you can tweak it with, do you do some simple carbs? Do you do more fats? Do you do more um, proteins? You know, do you go paleo versus keto? So those are nuances, but still always the biggest part of your diet should be those carbs. So uh, the good and the garbage ones. So like, like Dr. George was talking about, um, a lot of people are dismissing the need for the vegetables and the fiber, but he was more talking about um, the fats, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, when they eat keto, they you think bacon. I can eat any type of fat and, and not, you know, you don't want to be eating chickens ridden with antibiotics. You want to be yeah. eating grass fed meat you want to make sure like some people are just not paying attention to that quality. And when you're ingesting these things that have all of these inflammatory components to it, They're you know, within a few weeks you're, you're ending up and, and some people are eating the um, too many of the polyunsaturated fats, right? Mm -hmm. And then there was, um, he talked a lot about like the different types of oils even, right? You know, the, the coconut oil and how the purity of different, you know, the, the MCT versus the coconut and being able to extract that. So a lot of, a lot of um, the, the other thing was like he talked about just like gluten free, you could have a, a keto cookie. Mm -hmm. Right, and most of the time you're going to be dealing. Maybe it's sugar free, but now you're dealing with sugar alcohols and yeah. different sugar substitutes that are disruptive to hormones. Right. So at the end of the day, it can be a, a roller coaster of things. But one thing too, in particular, he talked about women, and how long-term keto for women most often does not work, especially if you're in that super low carb phase. Yeah. Because you cannot survive without carbs. Women do need carbs. It is very oh, disruptive to the sleep cycle, mm -hmm. and that's when you start to feel yucky. And um, it, because of the hormone balancing. So what he recommends there is cycling and having some prebiotic fiber and kind of having that day where you are increasing your carbs and kind of refeeding. Yeah. Um, similar to if any of you are familiar with the Bulletproof Diet. It's yeah, so he talked concept. a lot about cycling through the keto and then less keto and more keto. Yeah, yeah and, and I always think of it like a hybrid car. So he, he doesn't want you to be completely glucose free, but he doesn't want you to be completely you know, it, at any time, he doesn't want you to have too much glucose or too many ketones, right? He wants your body to kind of be able to shift, to shift back and forth. Yeah. So that was good. Now, what about some of the gadgets? I don't want to forget. So I, I have a gadget yeah. here with me. So it's not plugged in, but this is what they call the light stem. So if you see yeah, here, if you plug it in, sure. this is what we call red light therapy, which I happen to be familiar with because I've done red light therapy after my surgery. 
and I was having a lot of post-surgery pain, um, compensatory okay. pain, this some hand. nerve pain. Oh, you want me to put it here? Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, so I, I went and I did a month's worth of red light therapy and cryotherapy mixed, and that's the cold therapy combined with this red light. Um, the red light has different levels, right? So some of them are near, in, near infrared, there's far infrared. There's what they call photobiomodulation, which is actually the technology behind this particular red light. And what's cool about this, oh wow, there's a thread, is, oh, you can't even see it, sort of. Ah, that's interesting on there. Yeah, see. so it almost looks like a tanning bed, right? And they have these completely, you know, they had beds where people were doing the whole bed, which is fantastic for your body, which is what I did when I did my therapy. And some of these are lit and some of these aren't. So there's different types of red light that are visible to the human eye and some that are not. So what this does is it's a mechanism. This one is FDA approved for the claim. Um, they can only claim on there that, that it uh, manages pain, inflammation, and um, mild muscle. Yeah recovery and also uh, there's a different gadget that's got a different wavelength that they can use for wrinkles yeah it was like a wand yeah You'd it roll it wand. around um, these are actually to they promote collagen um, there are a lot more things that they actually do than what the FDA claims in terms of the research I've read in the past on the beds and, and looking yeah. really deep into the science but they have to have a lot of research to allow the FDA to allow them to make the claim yeah so exactly that was pretty pretty good you know that just means that there's a lot of support behind this technology yeah and of course it can do more but uh, they don't have as much research yeah and I'm experimenting on my dog and myself because she's limping physically limping so I'll let you guys know in a week mm -hmm. or two how well it does but this particular one I've never seen them in like a unit size like this like consumer friendly it was like you had to go do a bed which there's right. none around here there's some in South in Miami area and there's some popping up in some areas that are like more more promoted for aesthetics right so it's collagen production it's supposed to smooth your skin out things like but the that. ones that are for aesthetics don't go as deep into your skin so those ones will not help for the pain and the muscle relaxation okay so yeah so you have to do either or because it's a different uh, wavelength of light yeah 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 and it's really hard to find down here I mean it really is yeah. so I'm super excited that they have this portable unit that I could get for just my knees or just my back you could put it on your shoulder yeah. and like I said I laid it on my dog yep um, so she's she's and a treatment I, one and I've got one for the office I brought it home with me so we've got one here that we will uh, be start doing some, with. yeah, start playing with and uh, learn about just exactly all the things that it's useful for, all the good stuff we can do. Yeah, so if you're interested in learning more, it's called photobiomodulation or lighting or low level laser therapy. So it's, right. um, you, if you want to Google that, you can see different types of red light therapy. And the company is called Light Stim. Yes, Light Stim is this particular one that has the individual units. I, I don't know of any. They didn't have any other vendors there with this. They had other vendors with red light, yeah. but not with the actual units. So this was super exciting for me because I have knee pain. So I'll let you guys know. Yeah, yeah, so she's gonna be our guinea pig. Um, so that was really cool. Um, they had the aura ring there, so that was very cool, looking at your mood. Yeah, and sleep cycles. Sleep cycles, so again. Heart rate variability. Yes, they had. Um, they measure that. The, the aura, aura ring. ring. Yeah, measures that too. The heart rate variability, I'm very big on heart rate variability. That's a way to access that meditative state, and it's a way you can use biofeedback to do that. So, yeah, yeah and the, the Aura Ring, I actually have that too. It tracks your sleep, it tracks your um, readiness score, which is kind of heart rate variability. Yeah. So it, it tells you when you wake up in the morning if that's a good day to go and do like high intensity training, or if it's something that you should do more restorative. Right. It's, it's very informative. That thing has a lot of technology, like more than you probably use. But. Yeah, and then, um, why don't you talk about the tracking with your the knees? Yes, there was a pain guy there um, who did what he called the Escogi method, and um, it was he was Escogi. Mm -hmm. It was him, and um, he he talked a lot about physical alignment, the way we sit, the way that we end up torquing our bodies and things like that. And he did like a demo, and people got up and, and he did some really made, like stretches, general stretches, but. Ultimately, um, he partners with another company that measures the alignment within your feet. So when you stand on this platform, it has a laser, goes straight up your leg, and it can see how your ankles, if they're falling in and you know, kind of clutching, there's bars in between where you can see the ankles falling in. You can see the knees falling in or falling out. You can see where the, the hip comes out of alignment. So this laser goes up straight up your leg, and if you're off alignment, 
which most people on one side are, and of course my surgery leg was stick straight and my other knee was super out of alignment. So they put these little, what look like orthotics, but they're not technically orthotics because they're not private, you know, personalized measure. They're, they're kind of universal and they right. adapt to the areas of your feet that need the support and like stick straight. My laser was like perfectly balanced. So I've been walking around in these inserts for the last two days and I'm gonna run in them tomorrow on the first mm -hmm. time and kind of see how that goes. Yeah. Um, but I, I took tons of pictures of other people because I just sat at the booth and I was like watching everybody that came by to see if I was as crooked as everybody else. And um, it, was, it was really fascinating because every person, they put these things on their feet and their laser just went from, and I was looking to make sure the machine wasn't rigged. Right. I mean, these things really sold themselves because it the, the laser was just like a before and after picture. Right. So that was super. They're, that company is called A-Line, A-L-I-N-E.com. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of like a line, but it's A-Line. Um, and you, they said, because everyone asked me about it when I posted, they said that you go to the website, it runs true to size, and they did, when I went to see, they did have a trial where you can keep them for 30 days, and if you don't like them, you can return yeah. them. And then there was some other things that we tried out. So you tried out some hydrogen. I did hydrogen water. Yeah. So I had heard a, a podcast on it. I'm not super schooled in it, um, but there are some interesting, you know, things, claims that hydrogen water and, and energy and mm -hmm. um, pre performance and things like that. So I drank it this morning in the midst of my jet lag before I went to uh, Pilates. There'll be these little effervescent tabs that taste okay. kind of funny. Yeah. And um, I actually, I, I thought it, I did pretty okay. well considering I was one eye. Yeah. yeah? Yeah. No, I felt really good and I thought, huh. Is this because I've had a couple of days off, or is it because I'm like, <laughs> so um, uh, that one's an interesting one. That was called Trucy, Trucy, yeah. T R U S I I. So Trucy hydrogen water. Um, and um, let's spend just a couple minutes, so because we're almost running out of time. But we then did IVs. Uh, I yes. did an IV, and oh, you did, and you did a stick. NAD. Yeah. So yes. NAD was like all over. Everybody was talking about NAD. I never heard so much about NAD. Yeah. In my life. NAD stands for uh, nicotinamide riboside. Di something. Yeah, di riboside, I think it is. Um, but it is a unit that kind of, it's a molecule that holds energy in our body and is really important to how the mitochondria function. So when we're going through this thing called the Krebs cycle, which if you've ever been a patient of mine, we talk about the Krebs cycle. Um, but when you're going through that, then you break off some uh, molecules that then go, this NAD goes through the electron trans transport chain and that makes a whole bunch of our ATP, which is our energy. So they were talking about ways to increase that through your diet, through your exercise, and through taking NAD. And so we, wanting to experiment with these things, had shots of NAD. Yeah. yeah. And I liked it. it. I kind of, I felt like, yeah. <laughs> She didn't like it being in her. It was a I didn't like a shot in my just, tummy. Yeah. yeah, it didn't go right in, but it goes into the skin. Um, so I kind of felt more energetic. I felt kind of a little light and then kind of good. Um, I think you didn't. Feel I, quite I, as I noticed more. Initially, I had a little bit of a an ick feeling, and I think that was more in my head just when I found out it was in my tummy. I got a little wound up. Um, but later that day, I noticed my energy was so sustained, yeah. and it was like 11 o'clock my time. Yeah, and you and would normally have crashed. I would have been crashing because I am like an early bird, like this is late, you know. So it, I noticed that I had sustained energy throughout the day. I also know, just from my own research on my body, I do have some challenges from my mitochondria, and there was a whole, the whole talk on mitochondria, which is related to your ATP, your cellular function, all, yeah. it's all connected, um, that I thought maybe my reaction was because I probably needed it more. Mm -hmm. So it was, um, it was interesting. Yeah, and I'm going to definitely bring that to the office. We'll do, be doing some uh, IM, intramuscular or subcutaneous, rather, shots of the uh, NAD. The intravenous version takes about four hours to run and costs a lot. And so I probably won't do that initially, but if I have the demand, maybe I'll bring that in too. But initially, at least we can start off with the What is the significance of that over the stick? Uh, you give a higher amount. Okay. And so it has to be run in very slowly or you can get palpitations. Okay, so it's, it's how is it related to niacin? There's a component it's, of niacin, Yes, right? so okay. niacin is a, a building block of this NAD. So when you take niacin, which is a, a, one of the B vitamins, that's a building block, but you wanna go as 
close to the molecule as possible, and um, that gives you the kind of the biggest bang. Is that for your where buck. the flush comes from potentially? Well, mm -hmm. some people that that do niacinamide, yeah, yeah, they will get the the niacin flush, yeah. So yeah. we, none of neither of us felt the flush with this. You don't get the flush yeah, I didn't feel with flush. The NAD, um, but it's more kind of a little hyper uh, energy. It's kind of you just kind of feel. It yeah, it's into like you. it's fueling you from the inside out. Yeah, right. It's a. It, I I definitely felt yeah. a difference from that. Um, last thing, the, we got to talk about the um, brain stimulation. Oh, yeah. So yeah. this was really cool. It's called Alpha Brain. Yes. Um, and I know that Alpha you were Stim. pretty Alpha Stim. You were impressed with this, and there was a lot of good research and yes, and that supported it. So yes. also bonus. FDA, um, FDA uh, approved. Device. Yes. And so they have definite medical claims for anxiety, for depression, and for inflammation. Pain, yeah. And inflammation. Um, and so this is a little gadget that you put on your ears. It's a very, very mild stimulation. You don't feel it poking you at all. But, uh, and you can control the strength of it. You can go up. Um, I was with one fellow. He went right up to six, right up to the top. Like he said, I, I want the most out of this. Um, I was a little bit more tenuous, so I went up to about three. I was uh, at three the whole time. Yeah, and, and they say two is kind of the average. Two is about the average, yeah. So you don't need a lot of it, uh, but what it does is it starts to reset your brain waves. So uh, if you have anxiety, that's um, all of our neuro uh, chemicals actually work not only through the chemical piece, but also because of shifting of electrons. And so this is helping to kind of do some of that shifting and so it can help to decrease your anxiety, and they've got a lot of studies yeah, to show that. kind of wakes up the receptors that aren't doing kind of what they're meant to be doing right. when it comes to taking in some of serotonin, dopamine, things like that. Right, so re rebalance. It was pretty cool. I actually, I, I don't and you drink, can feel it. and I, I felt like I had a few glasses of wine. I was yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. it was pretty cool. Definitely felt it. Um, but yeah, no, there's some good science behind that, so I think that can yes. be really helpful if you're gonna. And that I will <laughs> also be bringing to the office. So. Uh, you know, a little bit over time, so the next few months, if you're a patient here, then come on in and we'll see what new toys I've got to play with. Yes. So if you guys have any questions, um, uh, there was just so many other amazing speakers and things like that, but um, feel free to share and I'm sure we'll talk more about some of these individual things yeah. just as individual topics down the road. So if this yeah, thing is like mind-blowing, we'll do a whole show on it. Right. And as <laughs> I bring them in, I'll do, we can do a little shows on them too. Uh, and so with that, if you don't have any questions, if you do, please shut them up. But if you don't, we will uh, let you head off into your evening with thoughts of all these fun toys to play with, <laughs> to help biohack, to help uh, I was improve. trying to find the definition. Uh, what Dave Asprey, the founder of Bulletproof, was saying is that he's now in the dictionary. Yes, and he got biohacker, added this year. It's like he's credited for the word biohacker. Um, but I'm, I'm looking online, I couldn't find the, the, the actual definition, but a lot of people's like, what is biohacking? Yeah, it's just really kind of accentuating what you can do with little kind of cheats, if you will, little tricks to kind of get the most out of everything. Yeah, like enhance your biology. It, it, totally enhancing your biology, that's a good way of putting it, yep. Yeah. All right, you guys. guys, you guys are great. Thank you so much for interacting. Yeah. I, it, let's see, we always, you know, have trouble deciding if we saw everyone's comments. So there's Jordan on the red light. Yes, I will absolutely let you know how it goes. Linda wants it. That was, I think, in response to the NAD. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah, um, we'll get it all for you. Hi, Ellen. We got Nelly and Janie. Nelly and yeah. Janie and Chrissy. Hey, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching. And please, as always, share this with any friends that you think might be interested. And uh, we will tune in next week we will have another fun topic yes okay have a, a wonderful evening guys thanks bye good night now